Hey there, my name is Amir and in this Lens Studio tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the Face Landmarks template. The Face Landmark template allows you to track more than 92 points on the face, which we call Face Landmark. The template also provides additional function to attach objects as well as check the distance between points to trigger an effect. To get started, first open Lens Studio 3.0 and select Face Landmark template. This template comes with three helper scripts to help you create a unique lens experience. Let's take a look at each script to see how we can customize the template. Pin to Face Landmark script is the main script of the template which allows you to attach your object to a single point or the center of multiple points. I'm going to disable all the objects in the scene and show how you can use Pin to Face Landmark script. Let's start by creating an empty object by clicking on the plus button and select empty object. Then drag and drop the pin to face landmark script onto the scene object that we just created. First things first, assign the camera and head binding. To attach your objects to landmarks, just place any content as a child of the pin to face landmark script in the objects panel. Now let's create a sphere and then place the sphere as a child of our object. Now you can see the sphere attached to one of the landmarks. As we mentioned before, we have 92 points that you can attach your object to. The template includes a diagram to show you where each landmark is and the number to reference that point. You can find this diagram in the resources panel. Now that you have seen the diagram, Let's select our object and see each customizable setting in the pin to face landmark script. There are two options available for placing your objects on the landmarks. First, stick in between points. This option attaches all the child content of the script to a face landmark position. The other one is a spawn at each points, which will distribute the child objects along all the face landmark points. The next option available is point mode. In the custom point, you can specify a specific point for the object to be attached to. You can refer to diagram to see what point you want your object to be attached to. Keep in mind that if you put more than one point, it will find the center between points and place the content in the center. Another option is predefined point. When predefined points are selected, you will get a defined point dropdown. With this dropdown menu, you can select one of the options to attach the content to a desired place. With the last option, you can offset all the child content from the face landmark points using the offset input. The face landmark distance trigger is one of the helper scripts which allows you to trigger an action based on the distance of two points. You can use the output of the script to move, scale, rotate, or change the opacity of an object. Additionally, you can also use it to create a custom face event such as the eye blink. To use the script, create an empty object by clicking on the plus button and select empty object. Then drag and drop the face landmark distance trigger script onto the scene object that we just created. Again, to use the script, we need to specify the main camera and the head binding so the script can access to the landmarks. For this video, I'm going to make an interaction where when the user opens their eyes, a sphere would show up in the screen and when the user closes them, it will disappear. Since we want to create an interaction based on the eye blink, I'm going to change a preview video to the one with the blinking. This will let us create the interaction easier. The first thing we'll do is define two sets of landmarks to calculate the distance from. Like before, you can use point mode to select between predefined points or you can have custom points. I'm gonna use predefined points here since it's easier to find the general points. Then for the first point, select the left top eyelid and then for the second point, select the left bottom eyelid. With the two points specified, this script can provide raw values between two points. You can easily see the raw distance on each frame with use of the print distance checkbox. By checking the checkbox, you can see the value in the logger panel. As you can see, this value can be varied based on the points that you select. 
To make the values easier to use, we will convert the raw value to a value between 0 to 1 using the mean distance and the max distance value. Mean distance is the minimum distance between two points that we specify. For example, to find the minimum distance between left top eyelid and left bottom eyelid, we can record the distance value in the logger when the preview panel shows a closed eye. That value is your mean distance value. In this case, I can see the minimum distance value is 0.1. The same way works for max distance as well. For example, to find the maximum distance between left top eyelid and bottom eyelid, wait for the eyes to open and see the distance value in the logger. That value is your max distance value. In this case, I can see the max value is around 0.3. Now you can see our output value now is 0 when the user eyes are closed and it will grow to 1 as the user open their eyes. By checking the smoothing checkbox, you can use the slider to make the value more smooth and less bumpy, but it may result in a delay. Now we have everything ready to create our interaction. To do that, we need to check the custom trigger checkbox. With the custom trigger check, you can specify a trigger that will happen when the distance hits the minimum distance or when it hits the maximum distance. I'm gonna change the trigger name to something that makes more sense. For the mean trigger, I will call it left eye closed and left eye open for the maximum trigger. To create the interaction, we need to use behavior script. First, let's add behavior script by clicking on the plus button and selecting the behavior. Now let's select the behavior object and in the inspector panel change the trigger to on custom trigger. Then if we want to make a trigger happen on left eye closed, we need to copy the name from the mean value on the face landmark distance trigger to the behavior script. Now I'm going to change the response type so when the left eye is closed the sphere would disable. To make our sphere shown with the left eye open, I'm going to copy the behavior component and paste it on the same object. Now, let's change the trigger name to left eye open and set the action to enable. You can do the same thing to create an interaction for right eye blinks as well. Now you see how easy it is to create an interaction with face landmarks. Nice, we have our effects triggering based on the face landmark. Now we're ready to preview and submit our lens. To preview the lens in Snapchat, click pair your device in the top right corner of the lens studio. Then open Snapchat and scan the provided snap code. Once the Snapchat and lens studio are connected, press the push lens to device button. You can now preview your lens in Snapchat. Take a look at the face landmark template page found in the Lens Studio website for more in-depth information. Thanks for watching and have fun creating your own face landmark lenses.